Welcome to the Assessment Process Training Module for Moody Health Center at Texas Chiropractic College. I'm Dr. Corey Mion, the Director of Clinical Education, and I'll be leading your module today. Today's module will cover the assessment process, the guidelines associated with the process, the grading scales that we use throughout clinic, the benchmarks students must meet, and some confidentiality considerations. Let's talk about the assessment process. If an intern is to be assessed, you can step foot into the room and access your assessment portal via SharePoint on a computer, a tablet, or a phone. As long as the media has internet connection, you can access your assessment portal. And all the assessments have been optimized for each one of these platforms. Once you've input your assessment, you'll submit the assessment. This gives live access to the students for immediate feedback. That's very important because if you evaluate a student and you find that they need improvement on a certain area, you'll document it in the assessment as well as communicate it with the student. Then the student can immediately walk out of the room, pull up their assessment link, and read what areas of improvement they need to work on. So accurate and timely feedback is extremely important to student success. We'll talk about the qualitative assessments now. Qualitative assessments are any assessment that is observed in a room. Most if not all interactions between students and patients can be assessed via one or more of the qualitative assessments. Assessments must be done with a live patient, an active patient, and with the scheduled attending doctor. There will be a few instances when an intern is shuffled from rotation to rotation. On those cases, you may assess those students. But in general, if a student is not assigned to you as the attending doctor, you should not be doing an assessment on them. Most observations or assessments the entire encounter does not have to be observed. What does this mean? You'll see in later training modules each individual assessment and each component of each assessment. As long as you are observing a piece of all of the components, you do not have to watch the entire observation. If a student goes in to take a history, you don't have to watch the history from start to finish. As long as you observe all the individual assessment points of a history, you can step foot out of the room once that's done. We want to focus on quality instead of checking bullets. On our history example, we don't want to say, did they ask where it hurts? Did they ask when it hurts? Did it ask how much it hurts? We don't check or grade individual bullet points. We may ask a question that said, student covered the appropriate content while taking a history. This means if a patient comes in with a focal complaint, a history is going to be a lot different than if they come in with three or four global complaints. Metacompetencies are focused on the quality, not the quantity. So we want to make sure that we're assessing how well the student did in each component and the quality of their work. Students should never ask to be watched or assessed for skills assessments. These skill assessments are evaluations. In essence, they're quizzes or tests in a course. At no time does a student walk up and say, I'm ready to take my quiz now in a course. So it wouldn't be like that for an assessment either. If you step foot into a room and you observe an encounter between an intern and a patient, chances are there's something that can be qualitatively assessed and graded. We've done a few things to optimize assessments and the timeline associated with them. We've put out deadlines throughout the semester that will help keep students and attending doctors on track and not feel overwhelmed towards the end of the semester. Attending clinicians should review an intern's requirements during daily report. What this means is every Wednesday students get sent their current standings 
with minimum requirements for their qualitative assessments. You as an attending clinician, weekly or bi-weekly, will also be informed of each of your students' progress. It's important that attending clinicians and students have an open communication about what they need observed compared to what they're ahead of schedule on. You can do this in daily report. Ask the students, is anyone behind on history assessments? Does anyone have a report of findings that I could observe today? Questions like this will help open a dialogue between students and the attending clinician and keep you on track for assessments of the day. Again, assessments should be scored in real time during or immediately after the encounter. Do not record them 24 hours past. Please focus on the quality. Anything over a few hours after the assessment and you can't remember the specifics to the encounter, which means quality of the assessment will go down. You'll learn later that We've optimized if you do four assessments per hour, you will be on track, if not ahead of schedule, for assessments. We have actually drastically reduced the number of assessments that attending clinicians must complete. In order to promote extra time in teaching, not just grading, please give good feedback on every assessment. This is your opportunity to teach the intern and to identify their weaknesses and their strengths and help them build as a future clinician. Now, how do we score students? We're gonna talk about the grading rubric and what each score means. We use the Dreyfus model, which we defined in the welcome training module. In front of you, you see a chart of the Dreyfus model, which is a scale from one to four. In general terms, a one is a novice, a two is an advanced beginner, a three is a competent student, and a four is a proficient student. To help you with the definitions of these words, this model has blown out individual components of knowledge, standard of work, autonomy, coping with complexity, and perception of the context. Please take a moment to read through this chart and get familiar with each individual component. As we move through the assessment training modules, you'll see that you're scoring the Dreyfus model on each question. That doesn't mean you walk into a history and go, well, that was a three, or that was a competent history. There are four to five questions of the history and you will score each question on the Dreyfus model. So knowing the individual pieces of this chart really helps to navigate grading. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is our standardized definition as a clinic of a novice through a proficient student. So what is a novice? A novice is a student with a baseline understanding of the didactic material, but they present with moderate difficulty when asked to apply their knowledge clinically. A novice will require close supervision in most, if not all, tasks. Without supervision and direction, the novice will perform to an unsatisfactory level. The novice learner experiences moderate difficulty when coping with increased case complexity and demonstrates little to no ability to collate a group of facts and draw logical conclusions. That is deductive reasoning. What is an advanced beginner? An advanced beginner is a student with a good understanding of the didactic material who demonstrates only minimal difficulty when asked to apply their knowledge clinically. An advanced beginner will complete assigned tasks to the acceptable standards and occasionally utilizes their own judgment in task selection, but may require supervision and direction to complete the tasks. Advanced beginners can appreciate 
but not cope with an increased case complexity, and they typically demonstrate a linear pattern of thinking and only occasionally utilize deductive reasoning. What is a competent student? A competent student is a student with an excellent understanding of the didactic material who effectively applies their knowledge clinically while occasionally utilizing prior experiences. A competent student can utilize their own judgment to perform most or all tasks without supervision, but they may require direction and refinement in some of these tasks. A competent student copes with complex situations and typically demonstrates deductive reasoning skills. Lastly, what is a proficient student? A proficient student is a student with a deep understanding of didactic material that effectively applies their knowledge clinically and demonstrates the logic of a practicing doctor. A proficient student performs at or above acceptable standards without supervision consistently and can take full responsibility for their work and decision making. A proficient student excels in complex situations and demonstrates deductive reasoning and pattern recognition skills. The student also has the ability to compare and contrast with past experiences. Now, you'll notice that by definition a four should be quite difficult for a student to achieve, but Students will earn fours on some components of each assessment, especially later on in their clinical phase. Let's talk about some of the students' benchmarks. The following slide shows you benchmarks of each clinic. This means that their assessments must average at or above these benchmarks by the end of the trimester or the end of their clinic course in order to move on to the next clinic. In clinic one, the benchmark is a 2.1. If we remember the Drivers model, this is just at slightly in the advanced beginner range. Clinic two is a 2.5, which is in the middle of advanced beginner and on their way to competent. Clinic three, or try nine students, are measured at the competent level at a 3.0. Lastly, in clinic four or trimester 10 students, they are above competent, moving towards proficiency at a 3.2. Now, something to keep in mind is we have drastically reduced the number of assessments and the number of scored components on assessments in order to facilitate more time with the attending to give feedback to the student and teach the student. What that means is a limited number of scored components on each assessment drastically affects the overall score and average. For example, if you have four scored components and the student does poorly on two of them, 50% of their components are poor scores versus an assessment with 10 questions, they would have to score poorly on five components. Most of our assessments hover around four to six data collection points. So accurate and consistent scoring is very important. And interns only know their performance if you stay consistent with your evaluation skills. If an individual assessment doesn't meet the intern's benchmark, but the scores average at the end of the trimester to above their benchmark, they will pass that clinic. What this means is in the start of the semester, it is highly likely that a lot of your interns will be scoring below their clinic benchmark and hopefully showing growth by the end of the semester they should be scoring higher than their benchmark. When these assessments are averaged together, it should meet or exceed the benchmark for their clinic. Every scored section is tied to multiple met competencies, and this is what helps us prove to our creditors that our students are meeting the meta competencies and we are focusing on the quality of their education. 
Remember, each assessment is a graded component, which means that FERPA, as we talked about in the intro PowerPoint, FERPA rules and laws apply. So please do not share your link with the students. Do not leave the assessment screen to your assessment portal unattended. On assessment feedback, whether it's positive or negative, it should be given privately between the assessor and the student. If you look at the asterisks at the bottom of the slide, we have had prior incidences of public praise that have been considered FERPA violations because you're still discussing a graded component with a student. So if you want to discuss an individual assessment or give feedback, please give feedback on a one-on-one -on -one manner. It is totally acceptable for you to ask one intern to step out of the room while you give feedback to the other intern. Do not discuss any grades in public areas. And if you know that there's a breach in confidentiality, please inform the clinic data manager immediately. I cannot stress enough how important it is to evaluate consistently and to provide quality feedback to the interns. This is what makes you an attending clinician. The ability to educate and properly score the interns so that they know how to be successful and they can chart their growth. We as educators often take for granted that students understand where they're weakest. A lot of the times it's up to us to identify their strengths and their weaknesses because they've never practiced chiropractic before. You are their mentor and it's your job to assess them correctly and timely and accurately so that they can grow as a future doctor. If you have any questions, you can look at the resources in this training module, check the syllabi or the clinic handbook. If you can't find answers there, you can refer to the following. For clinical operations, ask the Director of Clinical Services. For educational concerns, ask the Director of Clinical Education. And for resources, ask the clinic data manager. If you have any specific questions about the Dreyfus model or how to assess, please do not hesitate to come speak to me, the Director of Clinical Education. I'm here to help you be a better educator. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to working with you.